Alrighty, hey everybody, this is Reed again with our EKG review of the day. Um, if you enjoy these videos, please feel free to give a comment or a like to this video and subscribe to the channel so that we can continue to make these videos. So let's go, get, go and get started. So, first thing I'm going to do when I look at this rhythm is I'm just going to look through the trees, look through the forest as I say, and I'll come down to this lead to rhythm strip. And I'll just kind of look at these QRSs and I see some funky looking QRSs that are occurring quite rapidly. It appears to be a regular rhythm. And that rate would be if I count off from, from this QRS, the rate would be 300, 150, so somewhere maybe 200 beats per minute. And if you look over here at, say, lead three, you can see we've got a wide QRS. So we have a wide QRS at maybe 200 to 220 beats per minute. Okay, so let's see what the H is doing. If you look in front of these QRSs, so here's our QRS. If you look in front, I'm not really seeing much atrial activity in the sense of a P wave. If you look before these QRSs here, it seems kind of like this is the previous T wave. Same thing with AVL. And so I'm not seeing much of natural activity. Okay. So I've got this YQRS with no discernible atrial activity and it's very fast. So what's my differential? My differential is VTAC or an SVT with a barency. Okay. And these might be difficult to discern. Some features that would suggest VTAC would be like a marked axis shift or a V dissociation. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of clinical context to maybe help discern between the two of these. And so what if I tell you that this is a five-year-old male? Well, we know that five-year-old males that uh, these tachycardias are greater than 95% of the time SVT with aberrancy. Very rarely is it VTAC. However, what we can do is we can assess the situation and say, okay, maybe does this does this patient have any prior EKGs to this presentation? And so uh, you look through the computer real quick, and this is what you find. And so here we notice we've got, you look in lead two, you've got this regular rhythm. It's occurring at maybe 300, 150, 175, maybe 90 beats per minute. Got these P waves here, but if you notice that QRS, that PR interval is really short. It's got a little slurry delta wave. And so this is a pre-excitation syndrome. Meaning that this patient has Wolf Parkinson White. And so how does that help us with this EKG? Well, remember that Wolf Parkinson White is a disease or a syndrome that there's an accessory pathway between the atria and the ventricles. It's the accessory pathway. 
And what that can do is, in a normal EKG, this is what causes delta waves with a sinus rate, but it can also cause something called AV reentry tachycardia, where when the sinus nerve fires and it sends a signal through here, it can cause the signal to either go down the atria into the AV node, into the ventricles through normal conduction, causing a narrow QRS, but that signal can go retrograde into the atria, re-depolarize it, cause another narrow QRS, and continue to do this. And then it goes in this cycle. And that cycle that causes the narrow QRS is orthodromic SVT or orthodromic AVRT. However, what can also happen is our signal could go through the opposite direction of that accessory pathway. It can fire, it can depolarize the atria. It can also then go through the accessory pathway, depolarize the ventricles in this fashion, which will cause a wide QRS. This is not taking the Hispurkinji system. And then the signal can actually go retrograde up the AV node, redepolarize the atria, come back down. And so this would be called antidromic AVRT. And that's exactly what's going on with our clinical context and our previous EKG. You can say that this wide complex QRS is very likely to be an SVT with a barency based on the patient's age because we know we have a previous EKG with Wolf Parkinson White. We can be pretty confident that this is going to be an antidromic. AVRT. Hope that helps.